The following is a presentation of the Treasure Island Baseball Network. The calendar may say it's winter, but it's always a good time to be focusing on the boys of summer. From the stars who make the plays on the diamond to the ones who make the decisions in the front office, let's bring you Inside Your Hometown Nine with Inside Twins. Inside Twins is sponsored by Killebrew Root Beer, locally owned and operated. It's how memories are created and legends are made. Well, good afternoon and welcome once again to Inside Twins. We're going to feature one of the newest members of the Minnesota Twins today, Josh Stalmont. Very excited to introduce Josh to Twins territory. If you didn't have a chance to get to meet him at Twins Fest, we only have a couple of these shows remaining and a surefire sign that spring training is just around the corner. Josh will join us, in fact, from Fort Myers. We, of course, are brought to you by Killebrew Root Beer, locally owned and operated, how memories are created and legends are made. And, of course, you can join Join us live all across our various social media platforms, whether it be the Twins YouTube channel or the Twins Facebook page. Send in your questions for Josh Stamont. We'll field your questions a little bit later in the program. And, of course, also want to welcome in all of you listening all across our wonderful network of affiliates all across Twins territory. It's been a fairly eventful week as far as uh, Twins baseball is concerned. Obviously, some news and notes in terms of, of the roster. The Jorge Polanco deal was was last week. Uh, rumors circulating that Carlos Santana soon to be announced as a member of the Minnesota Twins. We'll hit on that later. A couple of uh, free agent uh, pickups as far as the bullpen is concerned as well. Uh, and uh, again, we're just inching closer towards the guys reporting in Ford Myers and some actual baseball to talk about. But right now, why don't we welcome in uh, the guy who was the first offseason addition for the Minnesota Twins, Josh Stomont, uh, who joins the Twins after a wonderful start to his big league career with the Kansas City Royals. And Josh, first and foremost, welcome to Twins territory. And secondly, I'm a whole lot more excited to see you in this capacity than when you'd be running in from the Royals bullpen to strike out three of our guys. So uh, happy to see you in a Twins uniform. Yeah, at least I get to go through the same door out there in left field, but I'll be uh, on a little bit higher bullpen this time. Well, let's talk about that because you were coming off injury. You had the thoracic outlet that cut your season short a year ago. You had some options. You had some decisions to make in your career. Uh, where or, or how did this come about that you ended up in Twins territory? You know, it's it's one of those things you just don't you don't get taught as a player. Uh, it just kind of happens. You, you rely a lot upon people around you. Um, I was with the Royals about nine and a half years, so it that just it just flies by. Um, extremely thankful for the entire organization. I have not a bad thing to say about them. Um, so you know, it's just kind of like one of those things that all of a sudden you're faced with this understanding that you're a free agent and you can go wherever. That comes with the zone set of things to learn and things to uh, kind of understand. So uh, as we went through that, you know, we had options everywhere. Uh, it was kind of nice to see especially coming off some tough injuries tough tough cards dealt um but uh, I've, I've always enjoyed playing in minnesota i've always enjoyed playing against the team it's always been competitive and and one of those environments that um just i've i've appreciated so as we kind of started to talk to people in the organization talk to you know see see kind of the interest here interest there um it just kept coming up as the number one um i'm i'm super thankful to I've been here and it's been more than receptive and welcoming uh, in my short little time here. So uh, I'm looking to keep that moving going forward. You know, it's a great opportunity when you get to be a free agent. But as you said, you're juggling geography. You're juggling what's best for the family situation in terms of where people are going to be. But a big part of it now is that, and I think pitchers are, are smarter than ever about this, is you know, pitching philosophy. What is the pitching Mm. room like? What can they do to make me maximize my capabilities? Are we aligned in terms of how we think about, you know, pitching? Can they add something that I haven't previously had? How much of that educational process did you go through and who were some of the people you leaned on in in that aspect of it? You know what, like one of our biggest things throughout this whole process was uh, having to understand that like it's, you can always learn more. You can always kind of be more receptive to new ideas. And so we had new pitching coaches over in KC. We had just kind of different environments. And so it was a lot of learning and all that. And so as we kind of went through that and, and realized like, you know, uh, what, what 
philosophies align with us? Where can we find success? It's it's everything. It's ballpark. It's environment. It's weather. Um, the player person balance is a lot harder. Like you mentioned, it is something that is is not learnable. You just kind of dive in head first with a positive attitude, um, and it kind of just comes along. I, I think that baseball allows you to kind of adapt on the fly, and, and the best baseball players are those that improvise. Um, with confidence. And so, uh, you know, that's kind of just how we, we went about this off season. Um, it is nice to get this under our belt and understand kind of how it works and the int- intricacies of that. But um, having the injury set this up, uh, it was a little bit different than most, uh, you know, for ours, it was just proving that we're healthy and that the, you know, the surgery was something that we can move on from and I get to keep playing. And, and that was a huge, uh, motivating factor was just uh, being able to get back out there do it in the capacity that i want to because I, i'm not i'm not very happy if i'm if i'm not doing something at uh 100 percent. well let's talk about you as a pitcher and again twins fans are familiar with the sight of you in a in a royals uniform and you burst onto the scene you were blade thin and the ball just explodes out of your hand great velocity you've changed up your mix a little bit in the last couple of years a little more slider usage that you added in in 2022 that's part of pitching though right constantly taking what you're good at and and adding and 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 mixing and matching yeah the game's going to constantly evolve and i think that that's just one of those things that as a as a player in general as as data comes in and as all the stuff just keeps you know uh exponentially growing and i think that's a, a good way to phrase it is that you know, as that stuff continues to rise and rise and rise, you, you inevitably are just going to have a higher floor. And I think that that's a, the hard, hardest thing to see as, you know, a traditionalist or, you know, somebody that grew up watching the game and it, the game itself didn't really evolve. It was a very, you know, they, they not a ton of rule changes. It was like a hard nosed style of baseball of like, you know, we want to play 162 grind, 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 just kind of grit your teeth and do it mentality. And so I think that, just recently it's 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 changed a lot to where the tech side is really advanced and so you, you start seeing all this kind of this change um and you two pitch pitchers are are starting to get eliminated because when he's two one he throws this x amount of time and when these when these hitters can get into those two one counts consistently enough one two counts and they're sitting on one specific pitch because he's going zone here it's the amount of data out there is not just watching video anymore and and just getting a general feel for the guy they genuinely know what the trends are what we do and sometimes even better than us so a lot of it's kind of peeling back those layers searching for what we need to work on and constantly adapting and improvising um i've always said you know kind of as a kid you you adapt you to year in high school you're adapting you know month to month college is week to week minor leagues is going to be kind of day to day big leagues it's pitch to pitch you're you're constantly doing this improvising and adapting it um you know you, you take a team like the twins and i've already seen it firsthand it's just like they they know what they want to do they're super open each person is unique they want to maximize your skills maximize your capabilities and kind of you know um make you the best uh, version of you you could be Josh Stamon is our guest here on Inside Twins, brought to you by Killebrew Root Beer, already in Fort Myers, getting set for camp to start. How big a deal was it for you to have the chance at Twins Fest just to meet some of the guys face-to-face? I know you've probably played against a lot of them, uh, maybe played with some of them at some point in time, but just to be all in the same room before you show up in the clubhouse on day one. Yeah, you know, it's it's we spend a ton of time together, and it's just one of those things that when we're on the field, a lot of a lot of things kind of settle, right? There's a lack of thinking. There's not too much going on. So, like, when you're on the field, though, you don't see a ton of the true person that's that's back there. We're, we're playing. We're working. Uh, we're trying to be the best we can be. So, being off the field and kind of taking that jersey off and being a true person, right, and, you know, player-person balance um, allows you to just truly know these guys. And so, when you're on the field with your friends, um, it is a lot easier to motivate and kind of get those things rolling. Um, so, we show up to Twins Fest and in 36 hours, we had not felt somebody that wasn't as welcoming as we could ever imagine. Um, it was just constant, constant, constant support. Um, and it just, for us coming in kind of blind, right? Uh, don't know a ton of people in the organization. I never played with them. Um, been with the Royals this entire time. So uh, unless they had crossed paths somewhere, we were, we were pretty blind when it came into this. And uh, it has been a huge, 
uh, blessing uh, in the past month and a half just to just to meet these people and, and see the faces and the the comfort and welcome that we've seen uh, walking in here. It's 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 refreshing to say the least. Yeah, and you bullpen guys spend a lot of time together, and let's talk about the group you're We're joining be- <laughs> because you have yeah. got. You've got the big fella at the back end and Joan Duran yeah, with the with Davis, the velo. Yeah. You got Captain Griffin Jacks back there, Caleb Thielball. You got a young lefty and Cody Funderburg getting a look here on social media platforms at uh, at Duran. It's a neat mix of guys in my mind because you all go about it in, in slightly different ways. You provide a lot of different looks out there. Yeah, I mean that's that's your key to success, right? If you can have all these guys operating on on different levels, it allows you to play your cards in a specific way to to maximize this win capacity you know um when everything's firing on all cylinders that you're you're having fun right and so a lot of these guys having all these different tools and all this different stuff going on uh it presents a little bit of a challenge to the pitching staff right they're not just cookie cutters you're not telling everybody the same thing you're, you're having to do a lot of work and i think that's just one of those things that as this game develops and relievers aren't two pitch guys um you don't just have you know an average fastball but a wipeout slider and have success anymore you you need a forged plan, an absolute path going forward. Um, and I think that that's, like you said, it's just it's so multi-tiered in this bullpen. There's so many uh, areas of talent that, like, you know, it, it just gives you the opportunity to play those cards however you want and, um, you know, really find unique ways to guarantee success. Now, you're not the only guy who used to torment the Twins who might be wearing a Twins uniform this year. They haven't announced it officially, but – all signs are pointing towards Carlos Santana, a guy who has just torched Twins pitching through the years uh, in a variety of different uniforms joining the club. You played with Carlos in Kansas City for a couple of years. Uh, he's a guy who plays the game with a tremendous amount of energy. What can you tell Twins fans about Carlos Santana? Carlos is going to come to play every day. It's, it's when, when he's between the lines, you're going to see intensity and focus. Um, he's not... Ironically, like you, you said, he brings the energy. He's not going to be the most energetic talker and everything like that. He comes to play. He comes to do it on the field. And that's, as a player, you want that surrounding you every single time. Um, it's just one of those things that he's he's going to come and he's going to keep his focus and everything's going to be driven towards, you know, winning that game. And that that's a, that's an attitude that sometimes gets lost, right? There's, there's so many things trying to pull our attention t- constantly. So when you have a guy that shows how to do things in the right way and he shows what the good, the right way to go about it and you know he's he's a true veteran um kind of just understanding all this stuff um and allowing him to teach you at, for a young group of guys because the twins have a bunch of them to learn from a guy that's done it and has success and um continued success as this game has adapted like we just talked about and improvised he's continued to you know garner this this success rate so um it's just one of those things you you, you learn from learn why and it, some of them are simple right just a you know, always coming ready to learn something, always coming ready to play. Um, some of them are going to be more complex where Carlos is, it's going to take a month of watching him to understand that, like, this is what makes him successful. But Twins fans are in for it. He's, he's always going to come, and he's, uh, he's just a bundle of energy. Yeah, and I tell you, having seen him catch, having seen him play third base when that was needed, having seen him go over to first with the the happy feet he's got over at first base, the guy uh, posts every single day. Last one here, Josh, on a, on a former teammate, you know, here in Twins territory, everyone's excited about Joe Maurer heading to the Hall of Fame. Since Joe quit catching, the dominant catcher in my mind in the American League has been Sal Perez, and you had a chance to work with Sal for a long time. What can you tell folks about uh, teaming up with a guy like Sal Perez and what he's meant to the Royals. Oh, uh, man! It, it to to summarize Sal is going to be extremely hard. The guy is so multifaceted that to kind of bring that all to to one point is very hard. He is he is the epitome of a leader. He will outwork every single guy on the field. He will out smile every single guy on the field. <laughs> and when you when you put all of that together. You have a player that is genuinely dominant. He wants to be in the spotlight. He, it's 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 not a want for the fame. It's a want because he he knows that he's going to be there. He's going to give it 110 percent, and that he's just hoping somebody matches his effort. Because if not, he's going to win that battle. Um, he is he is a, a stellar competitor. He is somebody that's shown me how to grind through every single thing when it comes to the game from top to bottom, family on the field, off the field. Um, he is a leader in the clubhouse, but through work foremost he's not going to be you know the most outspoken 
Uh, his positivity is un, unending. Uh, you know, I, I, I just say this as a respect side. Any Twins fans, I have no problem with you guys still cheering for Sal because he is one of those guys that you genuinely need to know his name. You need to watch him play. And if you want your kid to watch somebody as a catcher, you watch that guy. Yeah, and he, he's massive. You, you don't realize oh, how big yeah. a man he is. I, didn't, until... I said there's too many things, but he is, he is, a, he is a big kid. Yeah, big kid indeed. Great stuff from Josh Stama. We're going to take a quick break here. Again, those of you joining us on our online platforms, uh, whether it's the YouTube channel or the the, the Twins uh, Facebook page, send your questions for Josh Stama. He's got the answers. Uh, So we'll fire him in. We'll hear from Josh on that at the back end of our program. Right now, we have to take our first time out. When we come back, it's time for the photo album. If you're joining us on our our, uh, various uh, social media platforms, we're going to break out uh, the picture book and have Josh fill in some captions. That's coming up next on your home for Twins Baseball. Welcome back to Inside Twins, brought to you by Killaby Root Beer, locally owned and operated. How memories are created, legends are made. I'm Chris Atterbury here in our network headquarters at Target Field, a little drizzly and gray here in uh, Minneapolis today. Uh, and in Fort Myers, Florida, Josh Dahman joins us as he prepares for his first spring training in Florida after prepping in the desert of Arizona uh, in his years with the Royals. And Josh, I kind of warned you about this. We had some, we had an inside, an inside source here. Uh, your lovely wife was kind enough to help us out with some of this. So you have not seen the pictures we're going no, to uh, debut here on the on photo album. Uh, but we're going to ask you for some captions. So we're going to start where you should always start in the beginning. Uh, we call this baby Josh. Look at the, oh. the dimples on this kid. Unbelievable. And He's the T-shirt. There. I mean, look at that shirt. I mean, if you stare at it, I think you see a pirate ship on, or a shark or something. Uh, style, kid. style from an early age, huh? Yeah. I uh, see that. I, that looks like a little bit of a forced smile there. I don't know. If I have somebody behind that camera because there was no phones. I'm assuming at that time. Yeah, it looks somebody like behind, you're leaning against yeah, the outfield. That camera was like, go stand yeah. over there and take that photo. So look, looks like the fake rocks in Anaheim at the ballpark. It looks like you're standing out there next to the thing. Where Where did you grow up? Where Where uh, these... Southern California? Yeah. So yeah. Southern California was home, um, kind of inland, North County, LA area, and it was a huge blessing, obviously as. The kid, you, you really just kind of have a small scope of understanding as to where you are and where you grow up. And uh, very blessed to grow up there and get to play sports year round and just every, everything that, um, you know, I kind of got through that. Yeah, and a lot of baseball. And we're going to jump into some early baseball photos here. And noteworthy because for those listening uh, on the radio, you're rocking the double bats. You got uh, a oh, couple, yeah. of, couple of sticks oh, yeah. on the shoulder there. They, they took those away from me right after the photo and made me a pitcher. But uh, at one point, they let me touch bats. I mean, I just, I don't know, the cut, maybe, what is that? I think that's a Cubs uniform. That's, well, we won't talk about them. Yeah, you're rocking a number seven, I think, there. Uh, did, did we get Dr. Digits, Java's, yeah. Dr. Java in the outfield you, sign you, sponsoring things? Oh, yeah. You got, you, got the, you got the batting glove, everything. I mean, we're just complete emulation of, of big leaguers at this point that's this is this is early early 2000s you know just following these angels that just won the world series and i think my favorite player was david Eckstein, just a just a hard nose grinding player so that was that's all that is right there yeah that angel team had a bunch of those guys david oh, yeah. erstad Eckstein. those guys yeah. where they would fight you and they could they could play hey, i when, love it when did you turn your focus to, to to pitching did you have a pitcher that you admired as a kid Ooh. You know what? I, I genuinely wasn't the biggest fan of watching baseball. It's probably an attention problem. You know, who, who, who knows at this point? A kid's going to be a kid. But um, it was just one of those things that as baseball kind of progressed, uh, I don't think I really became a sole pitcher only until college. Um, I got to hit all the way through high school. Um, I also got to strike out a lot all the way through high school. <laughs> Uh, so there's a reason why I don't carry a bat anymore, and it's it's okay. I uh, I understand that that that's behind me, and I'm I'm just blessed to be still playing here at at 30. So uh, it's kind of looking at these photos is a little bit a uh, a nice reminder. Uh, just kind of understanding how long it's taken to get here, and, and the and the process of it, and the patience, and the endurance of of just realizing like still play like a kid, play like Sal yeah. and, and Carlos, and and this game still keeps going. 
And, and nobody does it alone. And that this next picture kind of speaks to that a little bit as uh, we're going to show this one. Uh, tell us about this guy. That is my dad. Yeah. I, uh, that was, that was all stars. So I don't know how, uh, what year that would have been, but I remember that bat. I remember everything about that. Um, just, I mean, it's, 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 it's so cool kind of looking back at these and, and just realizing like, you know, the, the focuses at that time were so different and, and not in a bad way. Right. It's like, if I could just capture that in a bottle and every single day play like that, um, you, you, you're Bobby Witt, right? You're, you're just a kid out there yeah. doing cool kid things at a, at a huge level. And so, and just those, the smiles are genuine. Um, you know, baseball just, that's, that's what it does, right. Is, is bring people together and allow you play a fun game, um, with, with no holds barred. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool just seeing all these photos. My goodness. Was your dad a ball player? Uh, you know what? I don't think he played, um, you know, a, a ton. Uh, he was, he was very athletic and kind of allowed me to learn all this stuff through that. Um, but he, he may have played like in the high school and, and stuff like that, but I don't think it's a ton of organized sports. That was a great picture of the two of you. Let's move on to college and you split time. A couple of schools there in Southern California. We'll start with Biola here. Uh, look at that on the mound. That's probably coming out of the hand about 98. Just steel focus. <laughs> I like the, the brim of the cap. And then you transfer. There we Azusa. go again. Yeah. Who's a Pacific. Yeah. You didn't have the long hair yet. Did you have the velocity though? Did you always feel hard? Yeah, I I had I had a good arm. Um, just even from a young age, I think I throwing was just a physiological thing. I was I was born to do. Um, it was really cool, kind of looking back and knowing through all this. You know, even in this photo, I think I'm 20, 21 at the time. Um, you're young. You are you are so young. I you still I look back and I I knew nothing. Right? You just it was playing a game except I had a 100 mile an hour arm. Um, yeah. So you, you kind of, it's it's just cool seeing at that point, you know, you, you always say hindsight's twenty twenty. If I could go back and be this guy again with my knowledge, like who knows what the ceiling is, but that's that's not how life works. Um, and it was cool. That's Azusa Pacific. Uh, it was the school I ended up getting drafted out of. I was, I was there two years and Biola won. Um, so, man, yeah. Azusa young Pacific. looking kid. Azusa Pacific to Kansas City. You and Christian Okoyo, right? You guys yeah, are the two. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Christian's still a prominent figure there with the Chiefs. He's he's always involved. I mean, the Nigerian nightmare is he he's he's unbelievable. I, it's just it's it's hard to if you watch him play again. Hard nose, just an yeah. unbelievable competitor. Well, let's go. We got one more bunch of shots here, and this kind of combines a lot of that. One. Uh, that you don't do it alone, and you're not doing it alone. And two, that sometimes when you're young and you don't know anything, it still works out. Because here's you. At, uh, is this a prom, I'm guessing? Oh, this is cool. Okay, so that is my current wife. And that is probably maybe what we would call day one. Uh, I, she, We went to prom in 2012. Uh, April 29th or 28th, I believe. I'm trying to get these right. You know, this yeah. is important stuff. Um, and that was the very first day that we kind of were really a couple. Um, from then, she's been my absolute rock through all this. Uh, she's just constant support. This is not an easy easy lifestyle. You know, it's it's associated with a ton of, you know, ease and other things. And it's it's allowed us to do some incredible stuff. But when it comes to off the field, uh, it, there's, there's a lot of adapting and improvising and, and stuff that is just unspoken. Um, you know, both of us were kids. You saw these photos. We, we all grew up like that. Um, fell in love at an early age. Baseball, you know, as a profession came in much later. So she has been an absolute star through all of this. Uh, like I said, it is, it is not easy. It never will be. Um, and if it is, you get HOF next to your name. So, um, (laughs) I want to know who the better athlete in the family is because she's got some serious credentials too. I don't know. I, you know what? the husbandly response is going to be her because that's, that's the easiest thing. If I, she's always right. And she always has been. So, um, she uh, was an unbelievable athlete in in college could pretty much play any sport she wanted. Um, I, she did track and basketball and ended up, uh, finishing her third degree just here recently. So she is, uh, smarter than me. She's better than me as an athlete. She's better looking. It's it's (laughs) talk about a kicker out kicking his coverage. 
Well, I think that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good uh, thing to be uh, is a kicker out kicking his coverage, and I'm you really guys are a great like kickers. Story. You guys don't talk to us unless we mess up. You <laughs> We're gonna come back, and 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 you uh, are involved in a very special charity also in Kansas City. I'm gonna ask you about that. We're gonna take questions from Twins fans as well. Josh Stelmont with the photo album. Our show is Inside Twins. Great stuff. One final segment coming up just around the bend, right here at your home for Twins baseball. It's our final segment here of Inside Twins, brought to you by Killebrew Root Beer. We've had a lot of fun with Josh Stamond, new Twins reliever. He's down in Fort Myers getting ready to uh, to report here in the next week or so uh, as the Twins uh, 2024 season just around the corner. I've had a chance to look at some old pictures to talk a little pitching. And we're going to take questions now from you here on Inside Twins. I get the first question, and we're going to run a really cool montage video here for those of you joining us via the YouTube page or the Facebook page. And Josh, this is some something that you are big into in Kansas City. Oh, you look at the hair. Yeah, look at you and Angelina both. Uh, this is you. Uh-huh. Again, you surround yourself with, with better looking than you, right? The puppies, your hey, wife. Every- uh, uh, tell us about Pitching for Pets. So we we were inspired just through this whole process. And, um, you know, I say this for everybody that wants to play, will play. And I hope you guys all do have success in, in, in baseball if you are. Um, it's just one of those things that you, you're going to get to the big leagues. And it's going to be this huge, huge introduction. And then all of a sudden you're going to realize, like, you're fighting for your job every single day. And and the problem when it comes into that, especially when it comes to, like, the platform and all this other stuff, is that you want to maximize every single time on that field. And so what ends up happening a lot of the time is that you start getting kind of complacent when it comes to off-field stuff. And, and you cut out time um, even for yourself. You know, you, you were spending all the time at the field. And very very competitive environment um and it was one of those things that we we looked at and my wife was a huge help with this because i couldn't have done it without her um but we you have a platform you have a short amount of time and you also aren't guaranteed another day in the big leagues so it's it's one of those things that we just we just kind of buckled down and and just decided to go ahead and do um started off a little bit slower and then year by year we just tried to increase as much as possible this is uh a bully focused breed. My, my wife and I had a, a dog for years before adopting some more um, named Miko and Miko just opened the door to us. Um, he was a, a black pit bull. And, and those are 100% the hardest dogs to adopt. They're always in the shelter and um, pit bulls are always going to have that kind of stigma. And so what we did was uh, we tried to open the door and show that like through proper, you know, care and all this other stuff that these dogs are the most, they need the most help and most attention. And um, this was our platform. This is our, our voice, um, trying to create the biggest impact we could um, in, in our time as a, as a Royals pitcher. And um, it, it was it was a huge blessing. It was continued through as much as we can. Um, I don't know what we have this next year, but probably something. Awesome stuff. That's uh, Josh Stallman. Let's get some questions now uh, from you. Let's go ahead. Uh, from Chris, I like the name. Spells it right and everything. Chris Roberts says, do you have any Zach Greinke stories? Ooh. Um. I do. I, is, I mean, Zach, is, he's one of a kind. I'm not. I'm not going to get into the into the story side. I'm just going to praise that guy. He is. He is the biggest student of the game. Unbelievable worker. Um, I mean, he just constantly, constantly, meticulously works on his craft. Uh, I am so glad to be able to spend the the years I did with him in, in the Royals. Uh, I I wouldn't trade it for absolutely anything. He is extremely brutally honest. And if you know me, you you know that I absolutely love that. I will. I do not beat around the bush. We have a finite amount of time on this planet, and I will get the most out of it. And when I talk to you, I'm going to be 100% truthful. And it's if it hurts, then just join me on the truthful side, and, and we'll get faster to the to the point. Yeah, and a PhD in pitching right there with where you're talking to Zach Greinke, the man. I, I, multiple. Yeah, it's remarkable. All right, let's. Uh, that's a great question. Let's keep on uh, and see how many of these we can roll in. This is from Beast Mode Ooh, Rocco. I, I got some uh, of these. <laughs> what is the most obscure play you've been a part of? Oof. You know what? There's a comebacker that kicked off of my foot and landed on first base. And I, I want to say it was Carlos that caught it. Um, and I think it was a, against the twins. So I don't know. We'll have to look was, that one up. 
Yeah, we'll it's, have to it's find a, out who hit it. Cool yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was. It may have been Sano, but if I'm wrong on this, then you can you can tweet at me. That feels like something would have happened to Miguel Sano. That it was. It like, had to be yeah. slow because that ball was in the air for what felt like about two minutes. <laughs> All right, let's keep uh, keep rolling along. Uh, who's next? Let's see, Tucker. What's your best pitch and uh, anything new coming out of the hatch? My best pitch is a strike. First pitch strike, especially. Uh, you know, it's just it, in this game, it's it's constantly trying to get all those down. Uh, new pitches. We were working on a little slider cutter this year, um, as well as like a splitter and change. Just kind of opening that arsenal, trying to get those percentages as close as we can, so that guys can't guess what we're throwing. I'm telling you, it's the year of the splitter. Ever that the splitter yeah. is making a comeback. Yes. Yeah. We Last were year was a sweeper. This year's yep. a splitter. This is going to be the year of the splitter. We're going to see a lot of that. Oh, okay. These, these hitters make their adjustments, and then pitchers like you uh, come back and uh, mix them up again. So that's the game, right? That's why it's always going to be a whole lot of fun. Josh, this is a great conversation. Uh, I hope the Twins fans had a chance to get to know you a little bit better, and we can't wait to uh, not only get to know you better throughout the course of the year, but watch you do your thing in a Twins uniform uh, and meet those dogs of yours, too, before this is all said and done. So thank you for joining us on Inside there. Twins, and we'll see you down there in Hey, you guys uh, don't have weeks. Bark in the Park, though. Uh, we got to talk about that. Because yeah, it's I don't one know of if the. Th- that's an thing, but I might sneak them in. Well, I don't know. We'll- We're going to have to get you to talk with, with uh, Larry. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's uh, that's been a sticking point. The, the Lack of the bark in the park uh, yeah. here because KC does it up. White Sox do it up. A lot of bark in the park there. We, oh, we're no. there uh, a lot. So uh, we'll, we'll see. see where that goes. All right. Yeah. All right, Josh, great talking to you. We'll see you uh, here at the uh, Florida Sunshine here in a week or two. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chris. All right, that's Josh Stelmont, a great addition to the Minnesota Twins family on the mound and off the field. Our show is brought to you by Killebrew Root Beer, locally owned and operated, how memories are created, legends are made. want to thank everybody who joined us via our various social media platforms with our live stream. Also, all of you joining us across Twins territory here on our fine network of radio affiliates. We've only got a couple more of these shows, and then it's baseball time 2024. So join us again next week for another edition of Inside Twins right here on your home for Twins Baseball.